Hello everyone. Welcome to today's show on Multicultural Community Awareness on COVID Vaccination. I am Dr. Aziz Rahman, a Public Health Specialist working as an Associate Professor of Public Health at Federation University of Australia. Today, we are representing Healthcare Awareness Society of Australia, which aims to promote health awareness among multicultural community groups. Our members include healthcare professionals from different aspects, including general practitioners and specialists. Today's program is part of Spirit Harmony Multicultural Festival Australia 2021, and it is organized by SKGA Incorporated Australia with the media partner M4 Media Group. Today, we are going to talk with a panel of experts about different issues on COVID vaccination. And our aim from today's session, if you clarify your confusion about COVID vaccination and get your jab as soon as possible. So without further ado, let me introduce you with today's panel. We have with us Dr. Navadeep Kaur, who is a general practitioner in Melbourne. Welcome to the show. We have Dr. Madhusudan Singh, who is a medical oncologist practicing in Melbourne. We have Dr. Priti Khilan, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist, who is practicing in Melbourne. And we have Dr. Raj Khilan, who is a consultant pediatrician practicing in Melbourne. Welcome to today's show. Thank you. Now, in terms of COVID vaccination, I'm pretty sure that you have noticed from the media, people were quite hesitant to take COVID vaccine, specifically when there was a preference given whether to take Pfizer vaccine or AstraZeneca vaccine. But with the changing durations from the last month, I'm pretty sure that you have seen now increased rate of COVID vaccination because now Pfizer is available to almost all of the people who are eligible to get the vaccine. And we have also seen from the media that there is also third vaccine that is Moderna. Now people may be confused regarding what are the vaccines and who should take which vaccine. So that is a common question I guess people can ask at the general practice settings. So I will go to Dr. Navdeep Ko if you can explain to our community people today. So what are the vaccines available at this moment and who can take which vaccine? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aziz. Um, so in, in Australia now, we have three different types of COVID vaccinations. Um, number one is Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Moderna has recently been added to our list. So I'll go one by one. Pfizer is, we need two injections, three to six weeks apart. And um, it is suitable for anyone who is above the age of 12 years and can be um, easily available at general practice settings and the hubs. Astra, second one is AstraZeneca, which has been available for last few months here in Australia. And again, two um, injections, eight to 12 weeks apart and available at both the settings, general practice clinics and the hubs. And the third one, which has recently been added to the list is Moderna, which is suitable for the age group 12 years old and above and is available for everyone's convenience at pharmacies. It is again two injections but this one is four weeks apart. Um, so these are the three which are available here in Australia. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Andy. Now when parents go to see their pediatrician I'm pretty sure that they are concerned about the safety of those vaccinations for their children. Now I'll come to Dr. Raj, if you can tell to our viewers today, so about the safety of those vaccines and whether children of anyone who is above 12 years, which vaccine they can avail at the current guideline. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajit. Um, and it's a very valid question asking about the safety of vaccination with children. Let's first talk about which vaccine we are talking about. Of course, all the three vaccines mentioned can be used in a, a, anybody more than 18 years of age. But when it comes to children, it, AstraZeneca is not indicated, except other two vaccinations, Pfizer and Moderna can be used. And Moderna is just a newly added. So more prevalent option at this stage is still the Pfizer vaccination. And now we can give it to children more than 12 years of age. 
And the interval between the two doses is almost the same as of adult age group. The dose is the same, which is a 30 microgram dose. Still, it is not the uh, any half dose type of things one sometimes people think about. And the, the interval should be between three to six weeks. And more recently, we are reducing the interval down to three weeks to uh, so that more uh, early and quickly, majority of the people can be vaccinated. When it comes to the safety point of view, uh, the safety profile in children is, is as great as in, in adult, with a few exceptions where the, some of the side effects are slightly more common than the other one. And the common side effect uh, as happening in adults is a local pain, a, a, you know, local swelling, uh, a, with, with fever, malaise, feeling a bit tired, headache. These type of things can happen, which is very common in any age group. And the sometimes in children, the, uh, it, because of the pain can be so severe that inability to use the arm on that side, particularly the, uh, the pain reaching to the shoulder and around the layering of the shoulder joint can happen. And, and uh, very rarely other uh, complications about the bleeding the chest pain, that is the inflammations of the covering around the heart or the muscles of the heart but that is very very rare thing that should not put children or parents off not to take the vaccination because the majority of the time it is very safe even if that complication or side effect happen it is manageable and none of the child has been found to be uh, seriously ill with that type of side effects or there is no that mortality has been reported so it's a relatively very safe, very effective vaccination. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Raj. Now, when we see the pregnant women, that is the precious time of their uh, life. So when they come to your practice, Dr. Pitti, so what are the uh, recommendations that you will provide for the COVID vaccination to this group of women? Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Pitti. Um, again, uh, a very important question because uh, maybe before the first week of June, we were all in a bit of dilemma. Uh, till we had uh, you know direct health directives and guidelines to vaccinate pregnant women but now uh, it is strongly recommended for all pregnant women to be vaccinated Pfizer vaccine is a recommended vaccine for pregnant women and that is what we've been using in Australia it's a mRNA vaccine not a live vaccine safe to be used in pregnancy at any stage um, it is uh, as and also as we know that a few weeks ago the health minister said that the pregnant women should be the first ones uh, and prioritized to get vaccinated as much so that they were, you know, in the same, um, uh, they were given the same importance to be vaccinated as frontline health workers. So my message to uh, all pregnant women when they come to me with any queries is please get vaccinated. Thank you, Dr. Pitti. Thanks. So in our community, uh, we have another group of special people who are immunocompromised. That includes uh, patients with different diagnosis of cancer. So I'll come to Dr. Madhushudan. So if there's any uh, patient who used to come to you with those cancer diagnoses, so what would be the recommendation for COVID vaccination for these type of patients? So the patients who do have cancer are a particularly vulnerable population of patients and, and, um, and the outcomes from COVID, if they catch COVID, is much worse than that of uh, any other person who's in whose immune system is very intact. Um, so we do have very good clinical uh, evidence to support the use of COVID vaccination in patients who do have cancer. The first thing is, is it safe for this patient population to be given the vaccination? And yes, um, I can assure you that it is very safe to, to do so. And the more important question is that does this vaccination actually work? So. And the reason for asking this question is because these patients are immunocompromised in, in significant proportions and, and it's possible that the immune system theoretically could not mount an immune response and therefore they may not be protected from the vaccination. Now fortunately there have been a few clinical studies which have confirmed that the, that the outcome of, from the vaccination is as good in this patient population as in the other ones. So, if anybody needs to get the vaccination, it's the patients who do have cancer or who are getting treatment with the chemotherapy. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manshudan. So, dear viewers, you can see from the panel of today, so they have emphasized more that you can take COVID vaccine if you are eligible, whether you are adults, whether you are children, whether you are immunocompromised, or whether you are pregnant. So, it's really important to get this message clear and then book your vaccination. But still, when there is a recommendation, still people are confused about this vaccine. And so, that's the term that we use vaccine hesitancy. So, scientists try to look at why people don't want to take vaccine. So there are five factors that they have mentioned that explain human behavior why people don't want to take vaccine. That includes confidence, complacency, calculation, collective responsibility, and whether there are any constraints involved. And I'm pretty sure those, these are the factors that people come to the practice, to the health professionals to clarify their confusion so they are confident to get the vaccine. Now, my question is to Dr. Nandi. So, what are the common questions that you see in your practice nowadays? I do understand that questions have changed starting from the pandemics and then rolling out the vaccine. And now people have, we can see lots of vaccination. But still, I'm pretty sure there are common questions that you face in your practice. If you can tell what are those. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aziz. It is actually um, a very good question. And um, yes, we still, you know, common things come common. So, we still do get the first question is about the side effects, as Dr. Raj already mentioned about the side effects in um, children. So it's it's pretty much similar, the common side effects in adults or children or in pregnant women. The common ones are um, fever, tiredness, body aches, sore throat um, or pain at the injection site. And um, usually they last, they are short lived, usually they are one to five days and um, Panadol can be taken and then as Dr. Raj mentioned um, the uncommon ones um, um, again with Pfizer and Moderna it could be um, swelling or inflammation of the lining of the heart or the, um, muscle of the heart which is called pericarditis or myocarditis and then with AstraZeneca it's been in media for so many months um, deep vein thrombosis but I must say they all all these uncommon ones are quite rare side effects so um, we should not get worried worried about these side effects and the common ones come common and the second um, important question i'm asked nearly every single day about covid vaccination is um, from people who have chronic medical conditions and they are on of course with their um, chronic medical conditions like diabetes high blood pressure heart problems or asthma they are taking multiple medications uh, including blood thinners aspirin or other blood thinners so they come in and um, they are worried that they already have too many um, medical conditions and they are on so many different medications whether they should get the vaccination done so to my, my message to those group of people with chronic medical conditions is that yes, they should get the vaccination done because um, as we know, when we have chronic medical condition, our immune system is not, it doesn't work as well. And um, when our immune system is not working well, of course we can pick up the virus very easily. And, um, and then with chronic medical conditions, we can fall very ill and end up in hospitals and end up on ventilators. So it is um, rather more important for people with chronic medical conditions to get vaccinated. And um, third question which I'm asked nowadays for last uh, two to four weeks is about the vaccination passport. People come in and ask about the vaccination passport. So what it means is now to dine out or to go and be, as we are moving forward um, to open up so we, would, we are all wanting to have our normal life so we would need the vaccination passport and um, so any provider who is doing the vaccination after the two injections they update it with the Australian Immunization Registry and um, if you have your MyGov account you can, um, you can print it, you can um, download the forms or you can actually download the app to get that vaccination certificate it's just pretty much a piece of paper which tells us that we have had two um, doses of um, vaccination 
and if you can't uh, access my gov account then you can go and see your general practitioner and they should be able to um, print it for you and thank you very much thank you Raghavan. so that's a very good point about the vaccination passport and down the track probably we'll look at this vaccination passport where we'll be able to access different venues that will come up like we are quite used to now by scanning the QR code at different venues so down the track probably in Australia we are going to use this vaccination passport to access different venues so it's really important even if you want to get back your freedom to get your vaccine as soon as possible so that's a good point Dr. Nandini you mentioned about the chronic conditions so I'll come to uh, Dr. Madhushudan about these chronic disease patients and your specialty is about the cancer patients so what are the common questions that you can see in your practice nowadays? So they're mainly concerned about the about the efficacy of the vaccination. That is it really going to protect them from the from the infection? Um, of course, the hesitancy um, that uh, that do they really need to get the the vaccination? And um, and initially there was a time when people were really concerned about um, about the side effects of um, AstraZeneca vaccination, especially the, the clotting problems which is associated with the AstraZeneca uh, vaccination. It's an extremely rare side effect and that in itself should not be the reason for a cancer patient not to get the vaccination. Uh, having said that, if somebody is really concerned now, then there's always the option of Pfizer vaccination or Moderna vaccination. Um, but generally, you know, the, the basic questions continue to be exactly the same, whether it's a cancer patient or a diabetes patient or, or, or um, patients suffering from other medical issues. Thank you, Dr. Madhushudan. Now, we know that pregnancy is an important part of a woman's life. So I'm pretty sure that women have different types of questions regarding this COVID vaccination. So Dr. Preeti, so when women come to you, so is there any question that you face when they are at different stages of pregnancy? So what they should do, whether there are any concerns about this COVID vaccination? Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Um, yes, uh, I think uh, the commonest uh, question women have when they come pregnant is, uh, first of all, is it safe for me to have the vaccine? And uh, the second question is, at what stage of pregnancy? So um, my uh, message to everyone here is that look, uh, the Pfizer vaccine is a recommended vaccine, safe and to be taken at any stage of pregnancy. In fact, uh, I would recommend women that you, if you just found out that you're pregnant, strongly advise to go and get the vaccine. Um, the earlier the women get vaccinated in pregnancy, it's just better and safer because as we know that uh, as pregnancy advances um, and you know there is more respiratory compromise because of uh, the diaphragm being pushed up because of the growing uterus with the fetus inside especially in the third trimester um, covid infection uh, if a woman contracts covid infection in third trimester could be more disastrous more uh, ending up in the hospital and needing icu uh, support so my message is that look it is an absolutely safe vaccine and as soon as you've found out that you're pregnant, if you've not been vaccinated, go and get vaccinated. Thank Thanks, Dr. Bibi. Now, Dr. Raji, you have already mentioned about who can take vaccine in the children and pediatric age group. And I'm pretty sure that parents are more concerned about their safety and you have already mentioned some of the side effects. So what are the common questions that you face from the parents nowadays in your practice? I think there are many questions and as a, as a parent we are always worried about the children and ask multiple questions about them. I will enumerate a couple of them I think because of the limitation of time and the biggest question they ask about why children should be vaccinated and particularly when we talk about uh, as I mentioned previously we, uh, many times in other interviews you do, the COVID is only very mild. 98% of the time children, they, they either have no signs or minimum symptoms, cough, cold type of things or just a temperature. And then if they are having mild symptoms and then why they need to be vaccinated, why should I put my child to that extra jab over here? And which I think from their side, yes, it is definitely valid, but it is our responsibility come to understand why we why the children need to be vaccinated and message to be conveyed to them and there are various various reasons in that way but as we know from the adult studies that vaccination is very effective in terms of 
reducing severity of the disease, in terms of reducing the hospitalization, in terms of reducing the need for going to ICU, in terms of needing the ventilation bed. So all these things are significantly reduced and this is what we are seeing in New South Wales experience which is coming. Majority of the people, those who are in intensive care, whether children or adult, they are uh, unvaccinated. So definitely vaccination reduces these chances. Of course, children are less likely to end, it, uh, end up in ICU anyway. But even if one child we can protect to go to ICU, this is worth it. And I, I would, my heart will bleed and I would cry if any child is dying because of because of the COVID. And it is a preventable disease now, and we can prevent up to some extent that severity, particularly in children. In the last year, we lost in America and in the UK, and many children was life was lost because we didn't know how to manage them, and we didn't have the vaccination at that time for children. But now we have all these tools in our hands, so we can protect that we can prevent them to end up in a hospital and the second question which in continuation to what Dr. P.T. has told parents generally ask about can I breastfeed my baby and during vaccination and how I can protect my baby, a child a, a, a baby from from catching COVID and that is another a very valid question because it's the emotional side and we know that uh, uh, babies, in, infants are generally immunocompromised stage. Their immunity is not that well developed during that time, and it is our responsibility to protect them. So, vaccinating during uh, getting a vaccination during pregnancy is one of the best tools to protect children because antibody also transfer through placenta to baby and give protection. So that is the most important message I would like to give. Uh, better to vaccinate during pregnancy or even before you're planning for to become pregnant to protect your baby later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Raj. So we can hear from the panel of experts today that um, you need to consider to get the vaccine. And if there's any confusion, you need to clarify these things so that you can be confident to go ahead and to get the vaccine. But still there are some misconceptions that's lying around and our federal government and the state government are trying to promote this thing and they have translated the different awareness messages in terms of vaccination. But I'm pretty sure that still there are many misconceptions that our health professionals today who are present today, they are facing in their practice. So we'll talk about the misconceptions now. So at first, if I come to Dr. Navdeep, so what are the common misconceptions or myths that you can see in your practice? Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Aziz. Um, yeah, look, uh, vaccination has been going um, quite well now, but still we are facing every single day. Um, people are still coming in with misconceptions and myths. The, the commonest one which I face in my general practice is um, that they come in and they say we want to wait and watch. We want to still see how it goes in um, for the next few months because they feel that it has, the COVID vaccine has come out quite quickly. Usually um, most of the medicines or vaccines, they take years of research before they um, uh, get available to the public. So the answer to this question is, yes, of course, we are lucky that the COVID vaccine did come out quite quickly and it might feel that it came out quickly, but um, actually the researchers and scientists has been working quite hard all around the world um, to um, make one and to um, get the COVID vaccination out and global funding has been supporting it um, that made it possible. All the vaccinations which are available here in Australia, Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca, they still have gone through all the three phases where they check um, whether it is safe for uh, using human body and um, second phase uh, about the efficacy and um, if it is uh, effective against the virus or the cause. So they uh, all, all of them have gone through all those processes before coming out um, to all of us. And DGA and all the uh, worldwide organizations, they have approved these vaccinations 
So the message here is um, they all are safe and um, equally effective. So do get your, your vaccinations done. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Nandi. Now, if I go to uh, Dr. Priti, so what are the common misconceptions that you see among the pregnant women, those uh, or the women of the young age, those come to you about this COVID vaccination misconception? Thanks. Um, yes, uh, I mean, look, I see women of all ages, so it's important uh, to see the reverse group there. Now, uh, women, uh, if I start with women who are uh, suffering from subfertility or infertility, they're quite concerned because um, I think there has been myths and rumors going around that it may delay fertility. But my advice to them is that look, all research and clinical evidence we have, uh, I strongly uh, recommend those women to get vaccinated, uh, especially you know if they are going through a stage of getting help for subfertility or infertility, because uh, very strongly recommended as it would prevent them further in their pregnancy. So it does not cause any um, subfertility or delays fertility in any way. The second thing also which women, uh, especially because now the vaccine is available for the adults from the age of you know, 12 to um, children from the age of 12 to 18, um, parents have been worried that uh, does it cause a delay in their periods or uh, does it cause any irregularity of the cycle? So some anecdotal evidence said that you know there could be some uh, irregularity in the cycle. Uh, but what I assure that look, if anything happens, usually it is there could be other factors involved, and it is a very transient effect. So it does not cause any uh, disruption in their menstrual cycle in the long term. And often we see that you know the periods could be irregular, especially in uh, younger children, uh, especially you know at uh, the onset after the onset of menarche. So I would assure that look, uh, this is uh, quite safe. Uh, going on to uh, pregnant women, again, um, this vaccine does not increase the risk of miscarriage in the first trimester. So very safe to be vaccinated as soon as you find you're pregnant. It does not increase teratogenicity, like you know, because it's not a live vaccine. And as you know, with some of the live vaccines like the MMR vaccine. Uh, women are advised to defer pregnancy for four to six weeks after getting the MMR vaccine, but this is not the case with the COVID-19 vaccine. And lastly, which has already been covered by Dr. Raj, is uh, breastfeeding. Uh, strongly recommended that if you have missed out this vaccine in pregnancy, get it done uh, in your postpartum phase, get it done as soon as you had the baby. And even if you're breastfeeding, uh, it has seemed to get uh, there are antibodies which are you know, secreted in the breast milk and would protect your uh, baby and infant. So my message to pregnant women is please, um, and women you know, or all children from the age of 12 to 18, is please get vaccinated. Thanks Dr. Priti. I'm pretty sure that it is quite reassuring to get this advice from this expert today. So you can be confident to go ahead with the vaccination. Okay, now Dr. Raj, so there must be some misconceptions among the parents when they come for the vaccination of their children. So what are the common misconceptions that you see in your practice nowadays? Thank you very much. And I would say uh, the biggest misconception is does it cause any autism? And, and second thing, does it cause any change in the genetic material? Because the biggest misconceptions which is spreading around is that it attaches with the, the genetic material and change your genetic material and it will affect the growing brain. So this is the message I would like to say, the way this vaccine works, it does not go inside the nucleus, does not attach to the genetic material, and it's very unlikely to cause any defect on the growing brain. So coming back to the autism point of view, that is a very interesting question. Uh, sometimes the parent asks, uh, does it cause any autism? And luckily I would say, the autism is generally diagnosed more in a, around the toddler age, between two to three years of age, and that we, we are not giving this vaccine at this ambitious stage uh, in children less than 12 years of age, unless until the autism is undetected uh, till 12 years of age, which is very really unlikely in, in Australia. So, and though we don't have a long-term study that this stage will back up to say, but whatever evidences we have so far, we can say it's very unlikely to cause autism. This is the message I would like to convey to my community. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Raj. 
So I'll come to Dr. Madhusudan. We have already reassured our viewers today that it is safe for the patients with cancer to take this COVID vaccine. But I'm pretty sure that they are really cautious what they are taking and there could be some misconceptions among these cancer patients. If you can tell what are the common misconceptions that you see among this patient group. So the main concern that my patient population typically um, has is that, um, that uh, the vaccination process was rushed through and gone into the gut and we are not so safe and we are not so sure that it is safe enough to be taken. Um, the answer which I give them is that, that um, it, has, uh, it has been given to practically half of the world population and, and you know, everybody has been looking at the side effect profile with a magnifying glass. Um, so far, nothing serious. Of course, you know, there, there are some side effects which are the rate of it is 1 in 40,000, 1 in 50,000, but the total number of lives this vaccination can save is much much more than anything else in, in this era so and, and honestly you know most of my patients sort of you know could not wait to get vaccinated because because everybody understood that how, how important it is for them thank you dr monshudam dear viewers we are near to the end of our program now i will come to the panel of experts today um, to deliver the single key message for our multicultural community people. And if I start with Dr. Raj Kiran. My message to the community is that vaccination is the one of the major tool to get out of pandemic. Major tool to send our children back to school because I would be very worried for any child less than 12 years, those who are not vaccinated and when they will go back to school. So the important way we can make them safe is to get vaccinated, making a, a ring of vaccinated uh, people around them, vaccinating uh, parents, vaccinating every household, adults, vaccinating school staff, teachers, and, uh, and other school canteen staff, so that these children can enjoy their activity back to normal schooling, normal sports activity, and normal social gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll come to Dr. Preeti. Yeah, my uh, look, my uh, general message to everybody is with the vaccine uh, quite mandatory now so that we can get our life back to normal. Pregnant women, uh, don't be worried, don't be scared. Uh, very important for you to be vaccinated. It is safe in pregnancy. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Navdeep. Um, my message would be that this is the pandemic of unvaccinated people. So please go and get your vaccination done as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Madhushudan. Um, we are very fortunate that this um, bug came in 2019 in, in this era and, and we, we have been able to get a vaccination um, so quickly. Um, if for example this, this had come 10 or 20 years ago, the, the scenario would be very different. We have seen the, the pictures from India, from USA, from Brazil, from Europe and seen what kind of devastation this can cause and, uh, and uh, we have also seen um, what kind of uh, life they have after the vaccination. So let's all roll up our sleeves and get the vaccination. Um, in my household, my father has had the vaccination, I have had it, my wife has had it and two of my kids have had it. So I, 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 I can walk the walk basically. Thank you, Dr. Manushadhan. I would like to thank all the panel members who provided their valuable time today to deliver the message to reassure our multicultural community people today that you should take your vaccine as soon as possible because the scientific evidence clearly shows that it will protect you, your families, and this community people. So my last message is whenever you have any confusion about this vaccine, there are plenty of resources, but it's really important to look at the authentic resource. And if there's any confusion, see your general practitioner, see your doctor, see your specialist, so that you are confident what you are taking. The last message that I would like to mention is vaccination is not the only thing that we need to follow in this pandemic. We also need to follow the common public health messages, the public health advice, and together we'll be able to beat this virus together we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.